everybody, we are here with uh, George Lacco and David Mamoudier. Uh, David is the director of an amazing short film called Snake Dick. And George is the producer. How are you guys? We're good, we're good. George is having this uh, apparition problem right now. He keeps just sort of, you know, blowing in and out of reality. <laughs> yeah, I was um, kind of, I was, I was wondering <laughs> if he was floating in between worlds, but we'll, we'll just you deal said with that, it. Stop doing it. <laughs> the, sig the signal's strong, so we're fine. Right, right, uh, right. So let's talk about Snake Dick. This was, this yeah. was easily one of my favorite shorts from uh, last year. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Norman. Uh, how did this come about? Oof. Um, well, it was a, it was a labor of love, most definitely. Uh, we actually shot the project a couple of years ago. Um, we shot it in 2018, um, which is crazy. And um, it came about I, it came about a little before that. Um, I got the idea around the time that Donald Trump sort of announced that he was running for the, the presidency, uh, which just seemed such a bizarre. Uh, you know, thing to happen. You know, he, he was a guy who was, you know, a serial misogynist and, and uh, he was running to be president of a country that pioneered women's rights. And, and my wife and I just, you know, found that so odd. Um, but what was interesting is around that time, uh, obviously you had the whole Me Too movement. And I think that sort of Trump's, you know, campaign in his eventual election really acted as kind of a rocket fuel for that movement. Um, where people just said, okay, like, you know, we've had enough if this guy's running the country. And that just got my mind sort of thinking, you know, about, about sort of the issues that were at hand and, uh, you know, a way that we could make something that sort of spoke to that uh, in, in, in a way that sort of, you know, uh, also delved into our genre tastes. And, you know, this is a genre we, we obviously love and, and uh, a story we thought was, was different and needed to be told. What would you call this genre? Horror or exploitation or exploitation horror or uh it, it's, or the good for her genre yeah uh, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of a mix i mean it, it's definitely got, got elements of you know there's a little bit of sort of a cyberpunk influence in there most definitely but but i would say it's a it's a sort of sci-fi sci neo-noir thriller I, I would say with some horror elements um it doesn't really fit one category i think that's what we love about it and you know it seems that that's what a lot of other people love about it. it's been it's been amazing the reach that the film has had and the various audiences that you know reach out to us uh you know with, with, with their take on the film so, so that's been a lot of fun yeah a lot of festivals take it as their sci-fi category some some put it in their horror category they kind of do the deciding for us um they don't really have a say in it but i think they've hit it on the head yeah it's it's funny because uh it since it touches so many genre uh, or genres, uh, I, I guess that gives you a, a wider net to cast yeah. when you're yes, reaching exactly. out to film festivals. That's amazing that, that, that you know, that, that uh, Trump's presidency sort of became the rocket fuel for uh, a strange uh, story about a, a phallic snake. I mean, like, who, <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, was amazing. Um, now, are there plans to create a feature from this short? Yes, and actually what you just mentioned is a, is a perfect segue into that. Um, we obviously can't you know, say too much about the feature, but, but what I can tell you is that um, it, it's set against the backdrop of a future election uh, with a very uh, you know, Trump-like figure who is president. And uh, he's running against what many believe will become the first female president. And our two characters really hold the key um, to stopping this Trump-like figure from, from uh, uh, winning the election. Um, so, you know, there's definitely some sort of political overtones in there. You know, we didn't want to go overly political with this, um, but we live in such a pressure cooker right now. And, and you know, the, these are issues that are, that are very relevant. And I, I think that feminism isn't a, a single gender issue the same way that, you know, Black Lives Matter isn't a single race issue. And, uh, you know, I, I feel it's important, you know, as a man to still be able to tell uh, a story, not from a female perspective, because I'm not a female, but certainly from a male perspective, as a kind of sort of inside out, uh, you know, a, a vantage point, um, rather than outside in. Um, and obviously, you know, we're surrounded by some fantastic, you know, women in front of and behind the camera, um, you know, to, to support us in that endeavor. Let's talk about some of the uh, women uh, in front of the camera and what they brought to the film, in particular, our title character. Uh, yeah. <laughs> pretty amazing. 
she's incredible um i mean it's so funny because like poppy is just literally the the sweetest person alive <laughs> and I, I i always find that it, it's always the characters that are sort of hellraisers play the darlings on screen and then it's the complete opposite with, for everybody else but she's she's just an angel and um i worked with her on another project as did george and uh that was that was a, it was a strange project um and we sort of came away from that where we were we were all basically just hires it, it wasn't you know a, a passion project as such and and uh but we really bonded and we said you know we want to we want to create something together and uh you know I, I said oh well i have this project but you know i'm uh, <laughs> i'm a little afraid to pitch it to you because it's so bizarre and out there <laughs> um and my my wife who was the costume designer on this movie she was also the costume designer on the other project we'd worked on together. So uh, I sort of said to, hey, could you pitch it to her? Because, you know, like you're a woman and I don't want to come across as a, que as a creep. So uh, so Su Susanna sort of, you know, broached the subject. And, you know, to our surprise, Poppy was like, oh, that sounds awesome. You know, like, let me read it. And, uh, and originally I gave her the choice of the two characters, thinking she would probably want to be, you know, the, the flute player. And she came back and she was like, I'm doing this, but I'm only doing it if I get to have the snake dick. So uh, nice. she, <laughs> she was she was on board from the get go. Uh, and then we went about casting the, the other role. And Sierra is a fantastic young actress that I, I work with through a foster kids charity that we do some work with. Uh, we work with foster youth and help them make short films. And um, Sierra just, you know, we knew had a big heart because she'd helped out with that program as well. And she's a professional actress, but she'd starred in, in one of those films and we really saw her talent. And, uh, you know, she just fit this like a glove. And uh, yeah, when we got the two of them together, the first time they met was on set because of the way the schedule to work. We didn't have any time for rehearsals. So, you know, that was a little bit nerve wracking. Um, but, you know, the chemistry was there from the off and they, they made our job really easy. Yeah, we only had about eight hours to shoot this and Poppy and Sierra just brought brought everything they had. Oh, they were just, yeah, without- Wait a minute, you guys shot this in only eight hours? <laughs> yeah, we this shot it in one, one night. overnight shoot? One overnight yeah. shoot. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. So so basically what happened was we, we knew that we, uh, we needed to design the whole project and, you know, right from the script around our resources and, you know, our resources were quite finite. So we, we found a location that we really loved and the owner of the location, you know, fantastic guy, but, you know, he, he obviously runs it as a business and it gets rented out to all these huge commercials and music videos and stuff. And he was like, look, I, I want to help you guys out, but you're going to have to be flexible and work around my schedule rather than working around yours. So he said, you know, look, I have this date, it's open. If you can get your actors, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you for this deal. But it just so happened to be the shortest night of the year, literally when the clocks were like turning back. So we're like, great, we're shooting this at night and we only have like, you know, seven and a half hours of darkness. It was daylight savings time and you were <laughs> Yeah, so, oh God. so, and it was freezing cold. It was just like, it was, it were like, oh my God, this is going to be a disaster. Um, but, you know, we just had an amazing crew and, and we were very lucky in that. Uh, the people that we worked with, they were they were happy to, you know, sort of muck in and, and, and you know, do two jobs, all of them. We literally, we had a hard in, a hard out. We showed up. We, we also were very specific about how we wanted to light this. Um, you know, a, a lot of people have commented on the film and said, oh, you know, the lighting looks, looks so complex. You know, it was really simple, actually. We, we ended up going with battery operated lighting for most of it. You know, these oh. uh, uh, LED tubes, uh, Asteras, I'm sure all the DPs watching will know what they are. And um, we rigged them in a way that we could give the axis flexibility, but it would also al allow us to move around and be quick. Um, and then, you know, we just use like bounce and, and negative fill just, you know, to shape everything. Um, and, uh, you know, our DP, Chris Saul, was very instrumental in that as well. You know, as, as I said, everyone was doing like two, actually three jobs. I think we had a lighting team of two people. Uh, you know, we didn't have a grip. We didn't have an AD. And we just had to get it all, all done in the time we had. And it was funny because we were fighting the light constantly. So, you know, we shot towards the gas station while it, we, it, while it was truly dark. And then we turned around as the, as the sun was slowly starting to come up. So there's some texture in the sky. That's why the background looks a little bit blue, which just, you know, actually helped in the end wow. announce everything. That, yeah. So we, we, it, but it we, looks so good. The movie looks Oh, thank great. you. No, yeah. that's that's that, that that was sort of, you know, one thing we were very relieved that we didn't have to do any crazy like rotoring or sky replacements. And literally the last shot of them driving away in the car was just us hustling, get them in the car and drive into the sun into the sunrise. So wow. <laughs> we literally okay. timed it to to perfection somehow. Wow. So how can people catch this movie and champion it and let everybody know that you they want to see a feature? 
Well, uh, it's on uh, Alter right now, uh, Watch Alter, um, which is uh, um, it's it's a platform of Gunpowder and Sky. Right. But it's available for free on YouTube um, through through that same platform. And it launched yesterday on International Women's Day, which was amazing. We had a fantastic response. So we're hoping that continues. And uh, yeah, please, you know, uh, check it out. And if you like it, you know, comment, share, and uh, tell us what you think. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, so this one was a hell of a lot of fun and I just want to see more of this. So, so let's see if we can't make that happen. We appreciate it. Norm. Yeah, thank you. No, Thanks so much. No problem. And uh, props to you guys and your indie filmmaking spirit. People can see this now on youtube and on all yes, yep. for free yes, indeed. check for it free. out and let everyone know about it so that we can see a full movie all right best of luck to you guys on this and thanks so much thanks norman. norman hope to hear from you soon appreciate it you too cheers all right.